What is up, YouTube? James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Back to Work Battles. Today, we're going to be using the Mega Gyarados team once again with Mega Gyarados, Tapu Koko, Salazzle, Landis Baron, Amoongus, and Aegislash. Let's get started and find some battles. So, actually, something, um, something my friends have recommended to me, not, um, when I was showing them the team was overheat on Salazzle as a change and I was thinking overheat could be pretty cool because it knocks out Metagross so you can outspeed and knock out Metagross you can knock out Amoongus I'm usually not getting more than one flamethrower off anyway unless it's like a sash Pokemon like Kartana for instance so it could be a pretty cool change if you do want to try it out um, as I'm still gonna keep flamethrower because it's just I don't know a bit consistent but over here can get some really nice KOs. But we got our first opponent here. Bring a team of Metagross, Gastrodon, Zapdos, Landis, Varian, the Incineroar, and Tapu Lele. So pretty solid team for my opponent. You got the Lele, Zapdos, Metagross core. You have the Gastrodon and Landis T, which are pretty common uh, partners. And then you got the Incineroar. So, ooh, I don't want to handle this. Honestly, I'm liking just leading Salazzo Gyarados right here because Salazzo Gyarados can put in a lot of work against my opponent's team, I feel like. Uh, do I want to bring Coco? Coco's alright in this matchup, but I don't feel like I absolutely need it. Aegislash could be pretty nice in this matchup, but I'm not thinking like Aegislash is that great here, to be honest. Because, yeah, I'm thinking of Amoongus and Landorus because I like because I feel like I would Mega Evolve Gyarados right away, so I would like Intimidate in the back. So, I'm thinking of Salazzo plus Gyarados because it threatens pretty much anything other than a Scarf Lele, which I'm hoping it's not. But who knows? It could be Scarf Lele on this team. I would assume it's Shattered Psyche, Lele, Assault Vest, Incineroar. Maybe it's Scarf Landers. Oh, if it's Scarf Landers, we're going to have some <laughs> issues. We're definitely going to have some issues. But let's find out what my opponent's sets are as we will lead Lele Zapdos. Okay. Against my Salazzo and Gyarados. So, this is going to be a really interesting turn one. The fake out's really obvious into Zapdos, which is why I'm thinking maybe not go for it. But at the same time, I could also just go for a Posinium Z into the Lele and try to pick up that knockout right away. I'm also thinking maybe going hard Amoongus here, but it comes down to what does my opponent decide to do. Is it worth Lele right here to... Psychic. To be honest, I feel like if you're my opponent, you go for the double tax because if I fake out Zapdos and Dragon Dance up as you protect Lele, you're in a really awful spot. The only thing I could see maybe uh, hurting me is maybe if it's Scarf Lele, but we're going to find out right now. I think I'm going to Acid Downpour. I honestly think that going out into Amoongus because I don't want to take a Thunderbolt, for instance. Although I really think you would go for... Um, I honestly think he would go for Tailwind. I don't think it's worth Mega Evolving right away because the Intimidate could be, uh, be very helpful later. As I will go out on my Moongus here. Let's see what my opponent decides to do here. As nice, you don't protect Lele. So I do get the call right. I am going to get the Posinium Z off. And I, yeah, I felt like you would attack with Lele there because you just lose so much turn one if I just fake out in Dragon Dance. So let's get this Posinium Z off. This is going to KO the Lele. So I give it a Lele, which is a huge offensive pressure against my team. Although, I now kind of wish I brought Coco over Landorus. Because Coco with Electroweb can help stall out the Tailwind. Let's see if we go for Thunderbolt, if you're just going to go for Tailwind. You, you do go for Tailwind. So, could have got the Dragon Dance up potentially, but not too big of a deal. As I'm assuming Metagross might want to come in. But if it's Metagross, I mean, I can Rage Powder and Flamethrower. Too bad I don't have... Um, Actually, no, this is a bit more interesting than I thought. So, Salazzo's job was basically just to handle that one Pokemon. So, Salazzo, is it useful? For whatever's in the back, it can't really touch it for much damage. Amoongus is useful. I want to protect Amoongus for sure. But I'm wondering, can I just Spore and Flamethrower to Metagross slot? Because I get a punish no matter what. Because if you target out Salazzo... Like, I get a Spore off into Metagross, which is absolutely huge. Yet, if I go for Protect with Amoongus and he targets Alaz, I get the free switch anyway. But is it worth sacking Amoongus here? Because a Flamethrower off into Metagross won't KO, which I don't like. You know what? Just Flamethrower Protect. I'd rather make a safe play right here. I don't need to make an aggressive read right here. And honestly, an 
two intimidates might allow my Amoongus to survive the double up. So let's see what my opponent's gonna go for. As Me Metagross Mega Evolves here, nice. So I d so I can intimidate it uh, the following turn. As let's see what's gonna be Zen Headbutt gonna go out into the Amoongus slot. So that's excellent for me. A Thunderbolt gonna hit the Salazzle, but that's not too bad for me. As Salazzo is going to be taking a good amount of damage as I do get a flamethrower off into the Metagross, which is going to do an all right amount of damage. Oh! Oh, that's unfortunate for my opponent. That wasn't going to KO normally. There's no way that was going to KO normally by any means. That is unfortunate, but I do make the right read and my opponent get pun gets punished immensely by that. As Landris is going to come out. And honestly, I'm thinking just clicking Spore and... Yeah, honestly, clicking Spore is... And switching to Landris is such a safe play. Like, that is unfortunate because then it would have came down to what do I do next turn. I think I... I don't know, there's a lot of plays I could do. I think I switch out Amoongus into Landris and sack Salazzle there. Or maybe I could switch out Salazzle into Landris. But yeah, that's a, like a really unfortunate... Overheat would have been nice there because then I wouldn't have to worry as long as I hit the attack. Let's see. Spore into Landorus. And then I spore to Zapdos the following turn. As I U-turn out with my um, Landorus and the Gyarados and start setting up Dragon Dances. So let's get these Intimidates rolling. Let's get these Spores rolling onto my opponent's side. As Let's see what my opponent's going to do. Rock Slide. Yep. So pretty much my opponent's only really big way out right here is clicking that rock slide button. Heat wave? No, just a thunderbolt. Into a Moongus, expecting the Gyarados probably to come in on maybe like a heat wave. Ooh, paralysis could be big. I do get one spore out. There is one though. So that's pretty big. I can Honestly, should I just rock slide the Zapdos? HP ice. I don't think it's on this team to be honest because honestly you should have Ice Punch on the Metagross. Hmm. I like Rock Slide and Spore to be honest. I like Rock Slide Spore a lot here. Because I don't want my I don't want to get Gyarados in immediately because the problem is now that I'm paralyzed could be problematic. As Zapdos does go for the Hidden Power Ice, does get the KO on my lander, so that's alright here. If I get a Spore off, that's amazing. Mm, this is where my opponent can maybe come back. I do get Gyarados in though. Landris is at minus two. I can Dragon Dance up. I wonder if you Tailwind or if you Thunderbolt or HP Ice here. Either way, I get a double Intimidate off in the Landris and honestly, just going for Mega Ball Dragon Dance and Rage Powder seems like a very safe play. I could Spore again, but I honestly don't want to anymore. If I can get some Rage Powders off, that would be huge. So let's see what my opponent's going to do. As I will Mega Evolve. Honestly, uh, my opponent's still in this by a lot. So let's see how, what's going to come out here. If it's Electrium and I get Paralyzed, that could be an issue. But I don't get Paralyzed. Okay, nice. So I get the Rage Powder off. If my opponent has Heat Wave, you reveal it now or you go for the Gable Havoc. Landris is going to say Asleep. Could be a Choice Guard variant for all we know. Dragon Dance is going to come out. That's a slow zap, though, so it's probably bulky. So I probably need another Dragon Dance. Um, I will go for another Dragon Dance, I think. And it's just a Thunderbolt into the Amoongus slot. Okay. Uh, um, I don't think a Crunch knocks out a bulky zap, though. So I'm just going to Rage Powder and Dragon Dance up. No matter what. It's the safest play. I could technically protect Spore as well. But, like, one, I could get paralyzed. Two, Landers can wake up and rock slide, and then uh, flinch could happen. It's not Scarf Landers, it looks like, so I am going to be able to get another Dragon Dance up. So, even if Zapdos is tailwind, the only thing I have to worry about are rock slide flinches from Landers. Uh, here we go. Landers wakes up, gets a rock slide, dodges the Amoongus, which wouldn't have done too much anyway. Um, yeah, Gyarados able to take it. Thunderbolt once again. That one had knocked out Gyarados, so luckily, Paralysis is not really mattering too much. And besides, even if I was paralyzed right there, you wouldn't KO me. Only thing I would have to worry about is a crit or a para. Now, we... I don't have to reveal. I just waterfall. And I'm going to rage powder. Do I rage powder? Um, yeah, I might as well rage powder in case you have super power and you go for the crit. Crit Earthquake's not going to knock out Gyarados for sure. And plus two crunch should knock out Zapdos, I would assume. As we do get a rage powder off. Waterfall into the Zapdos. 
Oh, it actually does hang on. Bulky. So, it gets its berry back. Are you going to tail in this turn? Superpower does come out, so that's actually amazing for me. Because, one, you're going to be, like, minus three now. Plus the fact that I am able to get my berry back. So, that's actually amazing for me as... Yeah, not going for Earthquake is interesting. But, Roost. Okay. Since it's Barry Zapdos, it can't KO me with Thunderbolt. I know that for a fact. Honestly, I'm thinking Salazzo could 1v1 the, Gar 1v1 the Zapdos at this rate. I just... The thing... I don't want Landris to crit me with an Earthquake. Yeah, because leaving Landris alive is might maybe a bit problematic. I'm going to Rage Powder and Waterfall the Landris. Because I know Landris probably can't protect anyway. And getting the KO on Landris... Oh, it's a match is just going to be forfeit. Well, my opponent didn't have much options. You had to hope I get paralyzed once with um, Amoongus. Probably that turn and get a Thunderbolt. And you have to crit or para my uh, Gyarados. I just want to get rid of Landris. Because once I get rid of Landris, that prevents my opponent from going for like a... Um, crit opportunity or tailwind with Zapdos that turn because it does survive and then you can rock slide and try to flinch my Gyarados and then hope for one of the full pairs and then Thunderbolt off into the Gyarados. So I felt like getting rid of Landers there was more optimal since I didn't KO the Zapdos and I wasn't going to KO Zapdos that turn anyway. I might as well just KO the Landers so Salazzo can potentially just help seal up the game in the end. Um, luckily it did work out. It did work out and we do take that game so very nice. The crit really sucks on Metagross, though, because my opponent was actually in a pretty okay position. I did get the calls right, though. Um, I'm thinking maybe Overheat Salazzo isn't a bad idea now. Because honestly, getting that KO on Metagross would have been absolutely huge. My opponent was definitely afraid of the Spore, which is why my opponent made the plays he did. Hmm, I'm honestly thinking about because Overheat would be interesting, because I'm thinking of every scenario where the only things I'm, like, flamethrowing... Because Salazzo doesn't last that long on the field. So Lazo doesn't last that long on the field. Over he probably knocks out Amoongus, I would assume. And definitely Chaos Metagross. So maybe it is worth to change it to Overheat on this team now that I'm thinking about it. The damage output would just be really solid, I think. So maybe I will consider it for the future. As we got our next opponent, LJ from Italy, 1589. Rating as our next opponent. Oh, hard trick room, jeez. Okay. This is for sure an interesting one. For sure. Ooh, okay. So... Don't have much to break through Porygon 2. Porygon 2 is going to be an interesting Pokemon to deal with. Um... Honestly, like, I'm liking Salazzo, Amoongus... Aegislash and Gyarados. The problem is I kind of want Coco because of the fact that it could be Z Hypnosis uh, Musharna, which it probably is. So I could have problems against that. I could probably just lead Salazzo and Mungus though. Yeah, I'll lead Salazzo and Mungus uh, with Gyarados and Aegislash in the back. Unfortunately, I don't have Flash Cannon, which would help here. Yeah, it would help a lot, to be honest. But let's see how my opponent's going to handle this matchup. I have to... Porygon 2 is not too much of a threat. I need to get rid of Musharna if it does come out. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, you probably don't bring Musharna, to be honest. Because, like, Musharna doesn't do that great against my team. Uh, Coco could have been nice because Nature's Madness and Sky Drop could have been great here, now that I'm thinking about... Yeah, I should have thought about what my opponent's more likely to bring. And I think it's definitely the Porygon 2 over the Musharna. Yep. So, Porygon 2 and the Camerupt leads... So this is already an interesting turn one. Because I have Taunt. I'm feeling Taunt more than Fake Out at the moment. Would you Heat Wave or would you Earth Power? Well, an Earth Power might KO Salazzle. You know what? I'm going to Fake Out and Spore the Camera Up slot. Because if Camera Up Mega Evolves, it's going to be slower than my Amoongus. So I guarantee the Spore off. And if you don't... Okay, we're going to see the switch out into Feeny. Oh, shoot. I forgot about that play. That was a very good play for my opponent. Very solid play. 
I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot he had a Feeny because I'm like, oh, it's Z Trick Room with Sharna. <laughs> okay, this is not going to end up well. I should have probably just faked out the camera up then. And Spore D Porygon 2. So fake out, eruption. Okay, that's not the worst case, I guess. It is pretty bad, but it's not the worst case. Did Amogu survive? Oh, I honestly would have liked to free switch out more. I honestly would have preferred to free switch out. Yeah, I honestly would have preferred to free switch out. Alright, not too bad. I'm not sure what you're going to do, though, but I think... This is a problem. I wanted to free switch out into Gyarados so I could threaten the Poisonium Z. And the Dragon Dance up on most likely his Protect, and I could have taunted the Porygon too. Yeah, this is a bit of a problem. <laughs> this is where... Uh, I'm going to survive the attack. It's not going to do much now, though. Um, I guess I get to Poisonium Z the Feeny and Protect, because you're probably just going to Protect Feeny or double out. Yeah. Which is fine, because damage on the Porygon 2 is pretty big as well in this game. So I'll take it. I need as much damage on the Porygon 2 as possible as well. So, yeah, the free switch into Gyarados would have been nice here. But, Poisonium Z going to go out into the Porygon 2. I need the damage output into the Porygon 2. Like, I need as much damage as I can. Uh, yeah, so, I, looking back at it now, I'm really thinking maybe Coco plus Gyarados was the correct lead here. I definitely do feel like that as Porygon 2. Honestly, that did a bit... Well, it kind of did the amount I was expecting. Flamethrower. Oh, great. Actually, is that bad? No, it's not. Why is it Flamethrower instead of Eruption? Uh, that kind of confuses my position because I guess I can go out in a Gyarados now and uh, I guess I can go in a Gyarados now which is a good thing <sighs> but it's gonna be an eruption I'm gonna take an eruption for sure I don't even know if you're gonna tr I think you trick room with Porygon 2 I don't think there's a drawback to be honest taunt into Porygon 2 so it won't be able to trick room for a few turns flamethrower again are you wanting to keep Salazzo because it doesn't do anything? That does so much. Yeah, this uh, Trick Room again. Alright. So, I guess it's not the worst case because I still have a Moongus and honestly, a Sludge Bomb and a Waterfall looks really good here. Do you not have Bulu in the back? I think a double up in the Porygon 2 might be able to get rid of it and I think right now that's what I have to go for or a Flinch. Because at this point, I've lost a, a lot of health in general. Well, Amoongus is still healthy. Camerupt is definitely threatened here. Do you really? I don't think you would make the hard play in Earth Power. A Mega Gyarados. Would you? Well, a Gyarados in regular form. Would you? That's like such a really risky call. But that's brilliant if you do. That's really brilliant if you do. I do have a way out of this still. Camera up is going to withdraw Bulu or Star After, maybe. It's, it is Feeny coming out. Okay. So Feeny's kind of easier to handle as a Sludge Bomb should be able to. The problem is I am going to be weak to Fairy. So even if I get the Knock on Porygon 2, I am threatened by the Feeny the following turn. But this honestly isn't looking too bad of a position. Because honestly, Amoongus is looking like a good switch in afterward. A Sludge Bomb into the Porygon. Ah, that's not going to KO, is it? Ooh, barely. Thunderbolt coming out. Okay. And a Salazzo, actually. Okay. Are you Specs Feeny? Because that's the only thing that can really threaten me at this point. I get to go on Moongus. Honestly, I'm thinking about Rage Powdering, but the thing is, that's kind of obvious. You m what kind of Varen are you? Would you just Moonblast? Would you just switch out into Camera Up? There's so many questions I have. You could call mine here. I think the place to Rage Powder though, always. And I think I always Waterfall to Porygon 2. Even though I could technically just clear Smog to Porygon 2 if I think Bulu might be coming in. Uh, game's not over for sure. Like, this game's definitely not over. <laughs> Somehow. So, Rage Powder's gonna come out. Let's see what my opponent decides to do. Call Mind, I'm kind of upset if I don't click Clear Smog. If it's Moonblast, I'm glad, obviously. It's literally what it comes down to with the Feeny. Haze. 
that doesn't matter to me, okay? I'm not gonna be boosting anyway in this game, I feel like. Because camera up is in range. I kinda wish I clear smogged. Damage would have been nice. What does Hayes accomplish though that turn? I guess if I Dragon Dance up. Oh, my opponent probably expected Rage Power Dragon Dance, which is fair, but I don't feel like that's a position where I really want to I do that. Camera's gonna come out. It's kind of obvious I just Rage Powder again, or maybe my opponent's conditioning me not to click Rage Powder here. You might have Bulu in the back. Well, if you had Bulu, you might have just went out into it immediately. I think I still Waterfall the camera up. Yeah, I still Waterfall the camera up no matter what, even though I know this is an obvious protect. If my opponent goes all in with the camera up, I can't risk that. This is Bulu. I was gonna... <sighs> okay. I just never wanted that to happen. Okay. Ooh, okay. Rage powder. Oh, you didn't protect? Why didn't you protect, my friend? This is big. I think my opponent expected me not to waterfall there. Well, what else would I have done? I can't Dragon Dance if you're going to Haze. Was I going to Crunch your Feeny? Eh. If I Clear Smocked, I would have been in such a good position. Now, it's a bit of an awkward position. Although, Bulu's damage output is limited. The problem is, I still don't know what kind of Feeny this is. We know it's Haze, but we don't know it's last move. If it's Soak, that's a bit of a problem. I want to find out it's last move. I'm... But do I give my opponent a chance to sword stance? Would you sword stance? Oh no, we're gonna find out. I'm gonna double protect. I wanna scout. I wanna figure out what my opponent does. I doubt your haze call mine, so the worst thing you can do is sword stance or maybe bulk up or maybe sub in this position. Moonblast's gonna go out and what do you have? Rock slide. So you're hoping for the flinch. Okay. Uh, I really don't need Gyarados anymore in this game. I'm just gonna clear smog and uh, waterfall. Yeah, because I can get the flinch on uh, Bulu. I don't care if Gyarados goes down. Gyarados has done his job. And I honestly think it will live to Moonblast. It probably won't live a Rock Slide combination. Let's see here, though. If I get rid of Bulu, honestly, the Feeny can't do anything. Just can't do anything. Match is gonna be forfeited. Yeah, I'm kind of confused on how my opponent was playing the end game. Like, my opponent was making really, really strong plays in the beginning. I think the plays were excellent from the, in the beginning. But, like, towards the middle, it got it kind of got a bit awkward, I felt like. Like, I don't get why you went and click Eruption there. Like, I have nothing that can really threaten camera up. You got a double knock out there, and then you're in good position. Even if you don't have Trick Room up, you're still in a really good position, I feel like, with the rest of your team. Especially since you had an oppor you had opportunities to KO Amoongus and Salazzle. They were both threats to the Pokemon you had in the back, which were Feeny and the Bulu. So I don't get why you didn't click Eruption. Like, I don't know. It's, it kind of got confusing for my opponent. I basically was able to win based off my opponent. Kind of choking, to be honest. Because, honestly, I feel like that's a game my opponent really just should have had. If you just clicked Eruption in the beginning. And even then, like... Maybe you just protect with the camera up and then you get Bulu camera up in and then you can get a trade off. Although I could have spored the camera up now that I'm thinking about it. Well, Bulu came in, but like, yeah, but you could have traded for at least a Gyarados and that's the main damage output I have against camera. And once that's gone, you're in a pretty okay position, I feel like. So yeah, a bit confusing on how that one played out, but thank you all for tuning in today's episode of VGC 2018 Vectric Battles. Uh, that last game, I don't know, kind of confused me. But thank you all for tuning in. As always, you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description, such as my social medias and all that good stuff, as well as the side series on the channel, the pace spin of this team if you do want to go try it out, and all that other good stuff. So feel free to leave a comment down below. Feel free to share this video with anyone who you would think would enjoy this. And of course, leave a thumbs up down below to show some support if you do enjoy this episode and the series in general. Otherwise, thank you all for tuning in, and I'll catch you around in another video.